Hello everyone, it's Eric from freelearner.how. Today I'm going to walk you through swapping out one of these old-fashioned four-foot fluorescent lights with new LED lights. You might think this is as simple as just changing a light bulb in your regular home socket, but it's not. These uh, fluorescent tubes require a specialized device called a ballast to modulate and start with a high voltage. I'm going to take you through the concept there just in a minute, and then we'll, take, uh, we'll redo the electronics on this so we can swap it out. Now, a couple of differences between a fluorescent bulb and an LED bulb. A fluorescent bulb and that ballast that I mentioned earlier, uh, the ballast goes and it creates a high voltage arc through the fluorescent tube that uh, vaporizes the material in the middle and allows it to carry a current and produce the electricity. Then ratchets that voltage way down because it's no longer required and modulates it over time. That allows it to have a high life so it doesn't burn out, uh, but it does require a little additional wiring. So I've created some simple diagrams here. We have our black and our white, our, our hot and our neutral, uh, coming in from the utility goes through the ballast, and coming out the ballast, in the case, the colors may be a little bit different depending on your uh, specific model and how many bulbs it supports. In the case of the ones that we're working on today, there are two bulbs. Uh, so we have yellow that goes to one end and a blue and a red that goes to the other. The ballast then modulates the voltage, uh, allowing the uh, fluorescent tube to produce its maximum light. On the other hand, the LED setup is quite simple. We simply need the black and the white to connect on different ends. Of course, that's with this model, 4-foot LED tube. I'll have a link down below in the description so you can see this model specifically. You need to validate that the model that you have functions the same way. There are different models that are wired different ways. Also, I want to make sure before we go any further to mention that uh, all of this is uh, going to be specific to your local area. I want to make sure that you're following any rules and regulations. And if you have any doubt in regards to the safety or proper installation, you should work with an electrical professional before continuing. Now I'll go show you how to connect these up. First step, be sure to turn the power off at the breaker. Dark. All right, now I can get up and I can remove the uh, fixture. Now I've got a couple of options. I could take the whole fixture down, go take it over to my workbench, and that way I've got a nice easy platform to work on. Um, or I could do the work right up here on the ceiling. I, I'm going to go do the work right up here on the ceiling, both because I think it's quicker, uh, it requires less steps, um, but also because these fixtures are attached to the ceiling using drywall anchors. So I don't want to uh, do any damage to the drywall anchors in the process. So it's just easier. I'm going to leave them here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the cover. There I can see I've got the old bulbs in there. We'll go ahead and remove the old bulbs and we'll take those down. Next, I can go ahead and remove the uh, covered shroud. This style just has little metal clips that hold it in. Some have screws. You'll have to figure out what type you have when you open it up. Awesome. So now I've got access to all the electronics underneath. Next step, before I go any further, is to go and validate that the power really is off and I really turn the right circuit off. An easy way to do that is with a quick tester. I can plug it into a socket, make sure I, all right, good, it's detecting properly. And then I can go and do the same here. Nothing, all right, really no power. I'm safe to go ahead and start working on this thing. All right, in the segment you're about to see, for some reason, I kept saying, I keep saying wing nut. Uh, I don't mean wing nut. I don't know how I managed to get that in my head while I was filming, but I clearly couldn't get it out. What I really meant to say was winged connector. And a quick comment on winged connectors, make sure that you have one, uh, that you have winged connectors that are uh, large or sized appropriately for the number of wires that are going into it and the gauge of the wire so that it holds properly. 
So this should look a little bit familiar given the diagram that I just drew for you before. Here I have my uh, ballast. This is an electronic ballast, modern electronic ballast. Uh, old ballasts, where it used to be a physical device that modulated that uh, voltage, uh, it led to that neat, creepy movie uh, flickering light bulb scene. Da -da -da -da. That came from the old metallic or the old physical mechanical ballasts. Modern electronic ones are able to modulate much faster, um, and they're much more efficient uh, in the way that they work. So I've got my utility power coming in. I've got my white and my black right there. Those guys go into the ballast, and I have my yellow connecting off to this end, and my red and my blue connecting off to that end. I'm going to use my wire cutters to start cutting this thing up and clearing it out. Um, I want to leave a little extra space here. So uh, I think the most normal approach here would be to pull out the ballast since they're no longer required. Um, but I'm going to leave them in here uh, just because if I want to swap back, uh, then I'll still have the ballast in place and I can swap it. So I'm going to make sure that I've got enough cable left that if I need to do that at some point in the future, I can. Go ahead and start clipping my yellow end. And then I'm going to do the same over here for the red and the blue. So far, so good. We'll just pull these all out and organize them a bit. Go ahead and pull off these wing nuts. And disconnect the ballast from the power. Great. Now I'll need to do a little bit of wire stripping. So I'll use my wire stripper to pull off just the ends of these guys here, because I'm going to need them in a minute. Bullseye. All right, so far so good. Next up, let's start wiring this in. So we'll start with this side as it's the most straightforward. Get those on nice and good and I'll use my tool here to twist those together nice and tight. And lastly, the wing nut. Get that on there nice and snug. Great, okay, other side. Now I'm noticing I don't have a lot of extra wire here, so I'm gonna make sure I've got good cable management and I've got enough this all comes together. Wonderful. It means I don't have to have an extra piece in here to connect it all up. A bit more wires here. Fortunately, I've got some wing nuts that are designed to hold this many wires. Same as the last side. We'll do a nice twist on there. Try and keep my arms out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing here. And get a wing nut on there. Connect that all up. Nice and snug. All right. The next up, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get these wires nice and clean, have some nice cable management. I'll put some cable ties in here to hold it all together. Start with this side here. This will just keep it nice and neat underneath the shroud. Make it easy to work with in the future.
Clip the ends of these guys. So far so good. I can put the shroud back up now. Same process as before, only in reverse. not pinching any of the wires and I haven't damaged the wires don't want to cause a short here so far so good now I can install the bulbs all right time to install these now the type that I've got uh, again link down in the description if you'd like to uh, look for them as well uh, fit directly in the four foot sides have connectors on both ends and are directional. So unlike fluorescent bulbs where they shine uh, light up in all 360, direct, uh, 360 degrees, these guys have uh, the LEDs all pointing downwards. Um, so technically, while these produce less luminance of light, um, what I'm noticing is I think they're a little bit brighter uh, just because it's all uh, shining it straight down instead of straight up into the cover for the, for the upper portion of it. So let's go ahead and put these in and then we can uh, power it on and uh, make sure it all works. All right, and before I put the cover on, I'm gonna go ahead and flip on the uh, uh, circuit. Uh, that way you can see what it looks like without the cover. Uh, and then uh, we'll make sure that uh, everything works. Beautiful. Looks to be working just right. So last step, I'm going to put the cover back on again and uh, we're all done. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video and you find this useful. Uh, again, I'll be having uh, links down below in the description to the product that I used. Uh, this is not meant to be a specific endorsement of the, of the bulbs that I used, but uh, I've, I've been just installed 12 of them in my garage and I'm pretty pleased with the results. Uh, I hope that you will be as well. Um, also, please be sure to visit our website, freelearner.how. There'll be a link down below in the description to a companion article that goes along with this video. Uh, as well as uh, um, additional uh, articles that I, I hope you find uh, interesting as well. So make sure to subscribe, click on the like button, and uh, join us next time where we learn to live free each and every day. Thank you.